All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Joy Hall, and I am one of the Associate State Directors with AARP Maryland. On behalf of AARP Maryland and our over 800,000 members and 400 volunteers across the state, I would like to thank you for joining us as we observe the Juneteenth holiday. AARP Maryland is always looking for ways to not only serve, but also surprise and delight all of our 50 plus Marylanders and their families. From free movie events, to networking events, to social opportunities, what we're doing might just surprise you. And we hope this program is no different. Today I'm here with my past AARP Maryland intern who loved us so much that she became one of our volunteers, Tiara Smith. Thank you for joining us, Tiara. Thanks for having me, Joy. I miss you and the AARP family. Thanks for having me. Of course. Well, I'm so glad that we're going to be able to have this discussion today. But let me tell everybody yeah. a little bit about you. So Tiara is joining us today because of her love for food, specifically healthy options of food, and of course, her love for her culture as well. Uh, she has a master's degree in nutrition education from American University and is currently working as the senior project manager at a nonprofit that looks to provide resources for people impacted uh, by technology to diabetes. Uh, Tiara, do you want to share a little bit more about your background and things that you do just to tell everybody, you know, just a little bit more about your, your nutrition uh, background? That would be great. Absolutely enjoy. You just you summed up everything perfectly as usual. I'm so every everyone, I am such a big fan of Miss Joy Hall. So she's just she's she's an angel to me. Um, <laughs> so a little bit more about me. Um, I have I have diabetes. Um, I was misdiagnosed with type 2 diabetes, but later found out I have a form of type 1 called latent autoimmune diabetes in adults, also called LADA or type 1 and a half. Um, it's actually not as uncommon as you would think, um, unfortunately, but I have been able to use this journey with diabetes to kind of help continue to reform our relationship with food, which is why I got into the nutrition education field in the first place. Um, aside from, you know, just helping people with type 2 diabetes. I also have done like some private health coaching um, to help people build sustainable habits. And now I am um, aspiring to be a certified nutrition specialist as well as a certified diabetes care and education specialist. And I'm so happy to be able to use the skills that I've learned over the years for this program today. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I just love it. I love to hear when folks are talking about health related items, especially on how we can give back to our communities so that they can uh, pick up some healthier habits that will sustain them in the long run. AARP, we're all about, you know, um, encouraging the, the increased quality of life. And that is one of the things that we can do through nutrition as well. So yeah. because we're talking about Juneteenth today, I wanna give a little bit of a background because I always think that it's important for us to make sure we remember our history and understand right. why we're doing these types of observances, of course. So here we go, I'm gonna keep it brief if I can. So the Emancipation Proclamation was signed uh, by President Abraham Lincoln on September, 22nd, 1862, um, and that was to free slaves, but it didn't go in effect until January 1st, 1863. However, the message did not make it completely across the entire country. So on June 19th, 1865 in Galveston, Texas, a general by the name of Major General Gordon Granger informed the people of Texas by reading the general's order number three, advising that all slaves were free. So this was the moment where the last remaining slaves were freed. So now, uh, 156 years later, we celebrate this date of freedom, which started in Texas, but of course has now spread throughout the entire country. It's known uh, to be Jubilee Day, uh, Liberation Day, Freedom Day, Emancipation Day, all the days, uh, but it's also the oldest national uh, celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. So today we do things a little bit differently in how we celebrate. We focus today on reflection. Uh, we focus on education, achievement, 
self-improvement and also respect for all cultures. Uh, and typically when we talk about Juneteenth celebrations, you hear a lot about entertaining celebrations or lectures or religious ceremonies, but of course, we have to talk about food. So Tiara, have yeah. you been to any uh, Juneteenth celebrations before? I have, I have, I have joy. Um, so um, for, for, those, for those who don't know me, I am originally from Baltimore, but I now live in San Jose, California and San, San Jose doesn't have a lot of black people in it. Um, however, my first summer here in 2019 actually was my first Juneteenth event. Um, I, in Baltimore, in Baltimore, I've gone to the African American Festival yes. in Druid Hill Park. Uh -huh. um, but out here, it was the first time I actually went to one, and it was just so beautiful and vibrant, and it made me feel a sense of community, especially being so far away from the community I, I'm used to yes. um, back in Baltimore. Um, but there were, I mean, there were artists. There was, there was, there was food, which we're, we're which we're going to get into. Um, there was music, there were just, you know, people wearing, you know, styles like yours, Joy, or like, or like hair like mine. And <laughs> yes. you know, it, it, it is just, it is a sense of belonging it's just, and it's a celebration. And I feel like, you know, a lot of us will probably think that Black History Month in February is too short. Um, and probably maybe we should move to, to June, especially since Juneteenth is there, we get more days. But I just feel, I just feel like Juneteenth is just a way to feel, to just celebrate my, my blackness and our blackness. Oh my goodness, you summed it up perfectly. I love when you said a sense of community and you know, just continuing it on. And one of the things that ARP has been doing and what we're doing throughout the year is we're focusing on, I know this sounds ironic, but we're focusing on black joy and black joy <laughs> supreme. What makes us excited about you know, just our culture and being black. So, you know, let's let's dive a little bit deeper. We have something to get to, and I don't want us to take yeah. too long. <laughs> so today, because me, me and TR could talk all day long, but we want to <laughs> focus on the celebration of freedom through self-improvement. And so, um, but we're going to do that through food. Uh, and one yeah. of the things that we've noticed with soul food, and I'm sure you can add a lot to this, TR, but um, yeah is that the African-American culture and food, it, it's been linked through, through Africa, it's been linked through slavery, and then the adaptation yeah. of being within that European culture, but still keeping some of those, those central to, uh, traditions. But uh, what I found is, in doing my research was that, you know, a lot of these foods, not all of them, had some higher calorie or higher caloric intake because um, right. it, it helped during the extreme conditions that the slaves were, were uh, laboring with at that time. And it provided yeah. them the nutrients they needed because that's all that was available. So, right. you know, I'm gonna now pass it over to you to, to take it away, talk about a little bit of different soul food options. And, you know, we're just Definitely. gonna have a conversation here, but go ahead, take it away. I'm here and Absolutely. I am excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so just a, a, a little bit about healthy eating and soul food and how you can use the food of our ancestors to actually nourish yourself. So soul food inherently is not unhealthy. A lot of the things that we that we eaten or that our ancestors have eaten are things that, they, that they've grown from from the farms and mm -hmm. um, and have learned to curate, um, especially because they they just survive. Um, and unfortunately, soul food gets a bad rap, especially especially it being linked to things like diabetes and hypertension, high blood pressure, and it actually stigmatizes the kind of foods um, that 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 we're used to. So when you see a lot of people consider healthy foods instead of things like collard greens, they they talk about kale um, instead of uh, when it comes to things like catfish, which we're gonna which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. Those things have always been usually stigmatized against us. So I think today it's important to talk about how you make some healthy changes in your own kitchen. Um, so today I'm, gonna, today I'm gonna make some oven fried catfish. Um, typically mm -hmm. when we make a, a lot of fried food, um, they're usually deep fried in like vegetable oil, which has a lot of hydrogenated oils, which increase your risks of cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. um, and as African-Americans or people from the African diaspora, we are we are high, we are more likely to have things like um, cardiovascular diseases, including um, adverse events like heart attacks or strokes. 
mm-hmm. um, for black women, for black women especially. Um, heart health is um, something that disproportionately affects us. Um, Joy mentioned earlier that I work with people with type two diabetes. Uh, type two diabetes is something that runs rampant through through all of probably most of our families. You probably know someone with type two diabetes in your family. All right. Uh, so I have a quick question. Um, yeah. I know that in the, the African-American uh, community, we are disproportionately affected by certain health conditions due to our, our, our nutrition. So can you talk a little bit about that for me? Yeah, absolutely. So we are, we are disproportionately affected by things like diabetes, um, cardio, major cardiovascular events, such as like heart attacks and strokes. Um, for black women, for black women especially, we're more likely to suffer and die from things like heart disease. Um, and, and when it comes to diabetes, especially type two diabetes, I'm pretty sure all of us know at least one person in our families or somehow related to us um, that has that has type two diabetes. Um, but also, th- but also there there are some there are some even I think unfortunately worse issues because of that. Um, we are less likely to get the kind of care that we need to care for things like diabetes. And I'm gonna talk a lot, I'm gonna talk about that a lot because when people talk about soul food and like the things we love, the first thing you hear is actually soul food, the movie, like big mom in your arm. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> yeah. so like <laughs> so we, you know, we we all know the things that people that people say about diabetes, but um uh when it when it comes to diabetes care itself. Um, we're, we're less likely to see a specialist. So like an endocrinologist, mm-hmm. um, we're less likely to have some of the diabetes technology. Like I, I wear a continuous glucose monitor instead of pricking my fingers. Um, we're, we are, we're less likely to have access to things like healthy foods, mm-hmm. um, like, like these, like this beautiful collard green here, um, to, to help us either delay or prevent diabetes or, or manage it effectively. And also like diabetes, it is, it is linked to other health issues like again cardiovascular disease. You are at a two to four times higher risk if you have diabetes to also have cardiovascular disease. Mm-hmm. We're talking things like blindness or um, amputation, kidney disease. Yes. If you're someone who's diagnosed with, with diabetes, the, it, it is not uncommon to see someone also be um, uh, diagnosed or have some sort of kidney issues following. So it, it is a very serious um, set of health conditions. Uh, but I, but through food, you can either again delay or prevent those issues, or mm-hmm. learn how to, or learn how to treat them, treat them effectively. So that's what we're going to talk about a bit today. Absolutely, I, I appreciate you sharing that information because there's such a stigma um, in the community when it comes to taking care of our health and being aware yeah. of our health. So you know, you've heard back in the day. The first thing I heard before I learned about the term diabetes as a child was the sugar. So something like yeah. that, you know, that that's yeah. the name that goes around in the community, but also yeah. something that AARP is doing now. And, and what yeah. you just spoke about are the disparities, getting the right treatment, getting the right care, and really right. trying to um, make sure that you are receiving the proper care for, for whatever you're dealing with so that you can improve in the long run. But that's yeah. enough about that because we could talk about health all day. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can. And, and you know, we'll, 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 we'll draw some gems in, as, as we're doing this little thing here. All right. I love it. Let's go. <laughs> so um, I am making oven fried catfish. So um, mm-hmm. I, I love my deep fried catfish too, but this is a, a healthy option if you're someone that kind of wants to cut back on the fat. Um, a lot of times when we eat fried foods like fried chicken or fish, we use vegetable oils that, that have a lot of hydrogenated factors in that. And that that those are the kind of oils that actually raise our risk for, for cardiovascular diseases. Um, but today, the only thing I'm changing is instead of deep frying it, I'm putting it in the oven. So I'm yes. using the same seasonings that I would use. I'm using a mix of um, I have in here cornmeal and um, all-purpose flour. I usually put a, a little bit more cornmeal because I, I love that texture, that crunchy texture of cornmeal goes. Yes, so crispy. in this, very crispy. And there is actually a spot here in San Jose, like literally the best catfish I've ever had. And like, and, and she uses just nothing but cornmeal, which is delicious. Um, but if you're, but when you're watching this, if you're someone that, that makes a lot of like fried fish. What I would say pay attention to is just my technique or um, and if there, or if there's something else you want to try technique-wise, feel free to do that. 
But this is how I, I make my oven fried catfish. Oh. So in this, um, I've already I've already kind of like made made a couple of fillets of fish already. So in this mixture, I have this spice mix. And in this spice mix, I have in paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, um, salt, a little bit of salt, um, a little bit of Cajun spice, and freshly ground pepper. Okay. So you can find any of these in in the store, um, if you there's or you can use whatever type of seasons that you like. To be honest, so, what you have there is exactly what people usually have within their cabinet. So it's not yep. like you're getting anything, any special type things. These are the standard <laughs> uh, cabinet items. Okay. Absolutely. So super easy things. Like you probably you can already already have them already. So I have two relatively thin slices of. Uh, catfish here. Um, I I just bought them frozen and just thawed them out, so there's no need to like feel pressure to buy to buy them fresh. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna season um, the fish on both sides. It's very important to season directly on the fish first. You don't want to you know just you know rely on just the the coating. Definitely season the coating as well, but season directly on the fish. And I'm using a quarter teaspoon here um also one thing i really like about this kind of seasoning layer process is that you you're you're not using as much salt when you don't season properly you're more likely to just add more and more and more salt mm -hmm. and if you're someone that's, that's kind of wash your health you you don't need all of that right so i'm gonna There's flip it over things. exactly exactly and and also you have to trust that these other flavors are going to do their job as well and Absolutely. boosting like you know, show, showing their own, you know, flavor profile. So, so while you're seasoning, can I ask you a quick yeah. question? Because before we, we came on, you were telling me a little bit of background about catfish and, and you know, yeah. the just the, the background of, of just African-Americans or Black folks eating catfish. Can you talk about that a bit? So, yeah, I was reading this book about soul food because um, I wanted to know, know a little bit more about, about its history. And there's a whole chapter dedicated to, to catfish. And because catfish is a bottom feeder fish, it was known as uh, a fish that was only meant for poor people, or let's be real, mainly for black people. And this was um, a type of fish that, that slaves would typically eat, um, but, their, but their masters or rich white folks um, would, would not eat it. In fact, they would they would tell they would tell the black slaves, no, this is this is this is your fish. You, you're you're gonna eat the, the the mud fish because they're bottom feeders. Mm -hmm. Um and over time, that stigma has kind of followed has kind of followed us into the 40s and 50s throughout the 20th century to being a type of low class fish. Um, even to the point where even um after the Great Migration, some middle to upper class black people were ashamed to to eat this type of so mm -hmm. over the years, so ever, so over the years, as we've become sort of more back in tune with our food, especially with soul food, and this really took place um, mainly shortly be shortly before the civil rights era, mm -hmm. um, where we started to become like really in tune and really kind of bringing back uh, our roots again. So now, so nowadays, is known as like a popular staple, and also because it's become a popular staple, there were subsections of the population um, that also decided to accept it as well. But historically, okay. um, catfish has been more of like the bottom feeder um, fish that kind of stigmatizes stigmatize us as basically second-class citizens in America. Wow. You know what? Yeah. I, I always love hearing different history like that because it makes me go do some more research too. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm doing now, I'm just kind of like lightly coating. I'm going to do... Um, this is my favorite dress technique. I just like to kind of coat a little bit on each side, drop it in that egg wash, and then a little bit, and then put it right back in. Mm -hmm. And this is cornmeal and flour. Now, if you're someone that's just supposed to use cornmeal, you can do that as well. Um, I like a little bit of both, but like I said, my favorite place, just all cornmeal, and I can't wait to go there. Um, <laughs> So this was like one of my pandemic foods, Joy, because, okay. you know, I was trying to, trying to eat, you know, relatively healthy during the pandemic. 
Okay. Um, but it, but it, it really it really really wasn't working. And my favorite fast fish place had closed um, in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so I had to kind of resort to this, but I didn't feel like actually using a ton of ton of oil. So I was like, okay, let's just try making some over fried catfish. And it was actually pretty easy to do. Wonderful. You know, we found a, a lot of interesting techniques that we uh, had to come up with over uh, the pandemic and just being at home, you, we got a little experimental, you know, lots of banana right. breads were made. <laughs> yeah, I remember they hearing about were. that. <laughs> And, you know, you know I, I mentioned earlier that, like, soul food is inherently healthy. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about if, if my family is from, part of my family is from South Carolina. And my granddaddy has always, always taught me about, like, why it's important to grow your own food. Um, the same, yeah, yeah, we eat fried chicken and fried fish, but the collard greens are things that he grew right in his backyard. Yes. Um, the, yam, the, the sweet potatoes are something that he grew. So a lot of these things are healthy. They're the same things that you that you would buy buy in the grocery store. Um, and it really is a shame that that a lot of this is stigmatized a- against us. Right. And and you know, like like you said, and um, we probably could talk a little bit about this. Is is the cooking methods that we use right. um, that right. can change the the dynamics of what we're eating, but it's also right. the items that we're purchasing. You know, whether it has yeah. uh, water or if it's it's in corn syrup or if it's in you know uh, if it's being preserved in salt. I mean, different things like that. We just got to look at what we're purchasing and try to pick the options that might be a little bit better for us. Absolutely. And like, there are definitely some, um, some tips that anyone can, can use when trying to figure out just how to make healthy changes. Cause that's what it's really about. Like going on a diet, which means that you're only going to gonna only be following a certain eat a pat- pattern for like a certain amount of time before going back to your older habits. Mm-hmm. There are ways to kind of like just make some healthier, healthier slots. So if you're using vegetable oil, mm-hmm. try coconut oil, I'm um, not co- coconut yes. oil is fine or canola oil. Mm-hmm. Avocado oil, grapeseed, um, something with a healthier fat. Um, again, instead of like deep fry, how about try oven frying? Mm-hmm. Or, or guess what? If you love, if you love, love, love your deep fry stuff, just add another serving of vegetables. So mm-hmm. these, so these collard greens, which I'm also going to make, I'm actually going to, I'm going to cook them in a little bit of bacon, but I'm not going to add too much more oil after that because right. I'm going to trust the bacon to, to, to kind of saute this as much as I need. But also I have fat-free spray that I use to saute vegetables. And to me, that gives me the kind of like results that I need, but without dr- one, just dredging it in oil or just like having it sit in all that fat. But also it makes me feel, feel a little healthier because it is a healthier choice. I'm going to wash my hands. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but feel, be it. feel free to keep asking me all the questions. So let's talk about while you're washing your hands, uh, what are some commonly identified soul foods? So, you know, that's for folks that, you know, really don't think about it. And like you said, it really depends on your culture and, and where uh, your family came from. I know that one of the staples or something that I make in my household where my mom said it came from our our, our background in the South is I use okra. And that's not always mm. something that people do. I make an okra soup. And that was passed down from my great grandmother. Oh, that sounds uh, really good. Yes, in the South. And so, you know, just being able to put together something like that from the, the Gullah Geechee culture. Culture, uh, <laughs> which yes. is uh, which we are a part of. Um, what are some some other soul foods? You know, everybody hears the basics, but yo, mac and cheese mac is, and a, cheese, is another yes. one. Um, depending on where you're from, um, I will probably say it's like jerk chicken, a mm-hmm. lot, a lot of love of Caribbean food. Oh yes, um, curry chicken. Um. You know curry chicken or even you know when we talk about our cornbread or or even those corn traditions bread. where we have the black eyed yeah. peas or Green, um, yeah, greens yep um i don't know if i would count stuffing as a as a as a soul food yams really? definitely yams yeah definitely yams sweet potatoes um, sweet potato pie <laughs> yes oh my god um all the good stuff but you know what we really have to think about would you say cabbage? Ham- ham- hammocks. Oh, yes. Definitely. Oh, that, uh, tur- turkey legs, definitely depending on where you're from. There's this, um, I didn't realize this was a thing until I moved down to South Carolina. Um, I can't remember what it was called. 
chicken bug was another one. Mm -hmm. And that's like, it's like chicken, rice, and sausage. And it's just in this really delicious dish. It, it's kind, it kind of looks like a jambalaya. Jambalaya uh -huh. will, be a, will, be, will yeah. also kind of be that as well. Um, but it's so, so good. So simple, but delicious. Oh, wow. Oh, so, Joy, what I have here is I have, um, I have my oven that's been preheated to 425 degrees. Okay. And I have um, a baking sheet that's lined with foil because I, I don't want it to burn directly on um, on the pan. And I've, and yes. I've sprayed it with, with cooking oil, but I'm going to spray it a little bit more with cooking oil. And it's also, and the reason why I'm doing this with, um, with the fat-free cooking oil is because I also want the bottom of the flour mm. to, to, to crisp up. Yep. Now, also, you can do this on like a baking rack, and the baking rack will, will kind of help you crisp up a little bit more, a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. But this is also fine if you don't have a baking. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it, put this on here and put this on here. This is going to be so good. <laughs> I'm a little jealous, like, but I'm across the other side of the country. I can't, can't pick any up. <laughs> You know, um, everyone, I, I was telling Joy that, you know, when I, when I, when I do cooking demos, this is like actually my real food. So Makes I'm sense. legit about to, I'm actually just going to really eat this. So this is me making dinner and you're, and you're, you're just here tuning into me and Joy's conversation. <laughs> I love it. But you know what? You gave me an idea for the, for the weekend. I, I think I'll definitely uh, be taking part in, in some fish. I'm canola using oil. Canola oil, oil spray. And what I'm doing is I'm going to spray the top. So okay. you want to spray, not directly on it, like, or not like so close on it, but like right. kind of like up here. So it's spread. And this is going to get it all nice and brown. Mm -hmm. You can be pretty liberal with it. And this is going to go in the oven for about 20, 20, 25 minutes until it's all bright. So it's nice and brown. And then I'm going to work on those collard greens. All right. I'm excited. I love me some collard greens. And then, you know, when you have one item that's a soul food, your, your, your entire meal has to kind of come together a little bit. You tend to always make at yes. least two items. <laughs> yes, right. Okay. So also, you know, should I show them what, what it should look like coming out of the oven? Yes, of course. Okay. You can so do. Here are some, here are a couple that I've made already. Ooh, that looks so good. So all nice and crispy. Um, I am excited to dive into this and I'm going to eat all four pieces because I'm going to go. That's do what I want. But also because it's healthy. Mm. Healthy, very healthy. <laughs> so that's how it should look. Um, but yeah, I'm going to work on those. I'm, now I'm going to start working on these collard greens. All right, let's see these collard greens. And this is, I just um, bought, this is, did I buy collards the other day? I bought kale the other day, but you know, collards, ooh. I always thought about mixing the greens together. I have a friend who's from the South and she's like, oh, I would put my turnips with, you know, my, my collards or, you know, it depends on yeah. where, where you grew up, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It does. And, you know, um, I am, I am making, this is like sort of like a quick saute collard, so I'm not going to have them just stewing all day okay. because, because those are going to be ready in about like 20, 25 minutes. I want this to be ready too. So I kind of want them all to be done at the same time. But if I had all day, like on a Sunday, mm -hmm. I would just have these just stewing yes. with some with some like smoked turkey or like um, mm -hmm. some smoked ham and just sitting yes. sitting up there just all, all day. Same um, here. Girl, put know. them on early so you can get ready. <laughs> so Joy, I have a question for you now. Yes. What types of soul food did you grow up eating? And, and what, what, I guess, misconceptions about um, soul food and nutrition did you have growing up? Okay, so let me see. Okay, I was always that kid that, uh, that was, so let's talk about, you know, healthy things. I was that kid. Yeah. But, you know, growing up, I think that the, the soul food really appeared during holidays. So that was when we really yeah. ate it. It wasn't something that we ate on a regular basis. Um, right. My parents were a little bit on the health conscious side, but when we went to my grandma's house or my mama's house, um, so my dad's mom and my mom's mom, we would yeah. uh, partake in, we would have our fried chicken. There would be mm -hmm. um, 
mac and cheese, of course. Mm -hmm. There would be sweet potatoes. But with our sweet potatoes, we put the king syrup in there and we put the brown sugar, you know, all, yeah. of, the, all of the extra sweetness. Um, yeah. There was always some cornbread in either house, cornbread or some biscuits. Mm. Um, let's see, what else? The potato did salad. Have, did y'all have ribs or like rice and gravy or fried corn? There was rice and gravy. And I actually, I love to make fried corn still. Um, but fried corn is something that me and my dad usually whip up together. You know, with our, uh, we put some bacon in there. Of course, I don't put too much extra oil because I use right. bacon in there. Um, I use some red peppers, green peppers, and some corn. And it. I love it. It's wonderful. Uh, there's sauerkraut. Oh, my goodness. If you mm. have a moment, everyone who's watching, please go and look up the history of sauerkraut. Interesting. Um, it, it has an interesting background, especially when dealing with Marilyn um, and who actually uh, started the whole idea of eating soured cabbage, uh, which is what it interesting. is. Interesting. Is, is it, does it have soulful roots? as well it does have it a bit of soul fruit food roots and it was mostly wow. for uh folks as as what you talked about with the catfish it was the same right. way it came to the sauerkraut as well um mm. but yeah we had lots of different options and it really depended on what which house we were at where you know the food was always different because we had different backgrounds and it came from right. different family roots and so right. You know, it was, I don't know if I had any misconceptions, but it would probably be that eventually I thought, okay, these foods are a little bit heavier than others right. and maybe we shouldn't eat them as often, right. um, but I always loved it. And that's when I noticed that the pounds would come on around that November, December time frame <laughs> because that's what I was enjoying. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, and I, also um... the other thing. The recipes yeah. that are, are not written down, you just gotta. No, they are not. Peer you better over. guess. <laughs> you, better, you, you, you better guess and try to remember the flavors. Yes. <laughs> Pour so, into the ancestors. Tell you to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You. You know. You know. You know exactly when. Like you. It's like. It's like. It's like you feel. Like it's like you're pointing. You just. You just feel like a soft like. <laughs> So I have um I have my cast iron heating mm -hmm. up. If you don't have a cast iron, definitely get one. But I'm pretty sure if you probably watch this, you probably have one. Uh, and I'm gonna put some um a couple of slices of bacon in there. Look, I I I, I think one of the biggest misconceptions I had, Joy, was mm -hmm. that tofu couldn't be healthy. Mm. And like I feel like that's also how do I put it? I feel like that's also part of trying to keep us away from or keep us from being in tune with our culture and our community. Mm -hmm. um, Joy, can you hear me? Can you still yes. hear me? Yep, I can still okay. hear you. Okay, good. Um, but I think over the years I've come to learn, especially as I started cooking myself, that there's actually a lot of love that goes into the food that we make. Mm -hmm. And that the soul food is not just it's not just about the food, it's about the, the community that the represents like it's about mm -hmm. you you whipping up fried corn with your dad or or us sitting at a table and yes. and you know those recipes that are passed down because that's history like i think yeah. the kind of food the food that we make it, it is it is history it's, it is a representation of what our ancestors went through and how they were able to survive absolutely that's what brought them together uh, you know, I agree. That completely brought us together. That's when we have those family meals. It's when, you know, you know, <laughs> you know who made what and you want to yep. uh, put in those special requests. I still put in my special requests with my grandmother's. Um, yep. Mama, can you make my potato salad? Grandma, can you make the collard greens? That's right. <laughs> Daddy, that's can right. you make the mac and cheese? You know, and so, and that's a way for us to actually have that, that family connection too. You know, yes. it's a way for us to to be able to interact with our grandparents or our parents and then That's pass right. that down to the, the next generation. So it's That's definitely right. about the love amongst generations and keeping the traditions going. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I don't I don't think we will be who we 
who we are today if it's not if it's not for this type of group. Um, yes. And I think like for a group of people whose history, you know, in some ways has kind of been, you know, unfortunately kind of taken from us a little bit. Mm-hmm. The food, the food is what we have. And one thing I learned um, in this book was that there's a reason why you have a lot of like curries and stews and jambalayas is because that is what our ancestors back in Africa used to make. And that's why, and that's why we have a lot of those here. Absolutely. I agree with you completely. That's what we had. So, you know, we've, we've talked about the different types of oils. Um, we've talked about, you know, different kinds of cooking methods. Do you want to share any other types of cooking methods or, or even what are some substitutes? Here we go. I mentioned sweet potatoes and how back in the day with uh, some, uh, should I say like cane syrup in there or molasses or some sort. Um, what are some other options for getting that same flavor, but using less um, sugar? Yeah. yeah. So one thing, one thing to always remember that sweet potatoes are naturally sweet. Yes. So, so, so the longer, so the longer that you cook them, um, the more that sweetness comes up to the top. So you actually don't need a, as much of syrup. Now, here are a few things. If you're someone that is just starting out, mm-hmm. um, the first thing I would recommend is to reduce the action, the, the, the portion size. So mm. reduce the amount of syrup that you have. That's the quickest, healthy thing that you can do. Um, I would even say, if you don't want to give up anything, anything mm-hmm. on your plate, the best thing that you can do is control the portion size. So Absolutely. if you are eating, so if you're eating on, in fact, let me have it, give you an example. If you it. are, <laughs> if you, if you are eating on, this type of plate usually eat on this plate. Gotcha. Yep. Um, and other ways that you can use like different types of sweeteners to boost the flavor of those sweet potatoes, use something like coconut palm sugar. So mm-hmm. coconut palm sugar, um, actually it doesn't taste, it doesn't taste like coconut, but it is like, it, it, t- it tastes more like brown sugar. Mm-hmm. So if you like a lot of brown sugar, you use coconut palm sugar, Coconut palm sugar, it does have like a tiny bit of molasses in it, but it's a low glycemic sugar. So mm-hmm. you're not getting all of those extra carbs um, and, and all that, um, all those fast acting carbs as well. Um, that's those are the sugars that raise your blood sugars yes. to the to the moon. Um, and also for for a few, here's another little bit of diabetes education. When you eat like these heavy plates of food like this, like let's say you you love the yams and the mac and cheese next to each other, can you get the the, the, the saltiness from the mac and cheese and the sweetness from the yams, you just want them all together. When, if you feel really, really, really tired as that, it's probably because your blood sugar is going up all the way, all the way up and you feel fatigued and that, mm-hmm. that kind of adds to that sluggishness. Um, but things like coconut palm sugar, um, another thing that you can do to, to kind of boost up the sweetness of sweet potatoes, add some, add some cinnamon and actually try to, try to saute the sweet potatoes a little bit. So that okay. we get that caramelization on the sweet potatoes. And that's where you get that extra sweetness. Mm, I love that. And like we said, there's always a way to add other types of uh, seasonings or other types of, uh, what, what do we call them? Like our cinnamons and our nutmegs and things like that. Spices. Um, spices. Yes, spices. our other types of spices yes. that will take away from us using too much salt or right. using too much white right. sugar. <laughs> right. And actually, I would say like, and so here's another thing, Joy, and this is a question I've gotten a lot, um, particularly from people of color when it comes to like maintaining the types of foods or, or what it's to keep the types of foods that we love in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I always stress is patience because remember, you're used to eating a certain way for so long. So you are learning something new. And when it comes to adding too much salt, you are used to eating a lot of processed foods and, and a lot of salt. So kind of taking, reducing that amount of salt, it may be a little bit jarring at, at first, but right. after a while, you, you have to trust again, like those, the, that nutmeg, that allspice, that cinnamon to really do its job. And you'll recognize that you actually don't need as much salt as you thought. I agree. And, um, I'm oh, sorry. I know you want to ask another question. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're good. I want you to continue forward. We got some collard greens to make. Yes. Um, yeah. So actually the collard greens, I have the bacon. The bacon is rendering its fat right now. Um, and I'm going to put in the collard greens in a, in a little bit. Um, 
there is another thing, like other like, like little little things that you can other things that you can do to like kind of boost flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say if you are making a chicken, um, mm-hmm. use things like rosemary or use things like like thyme, um, garlic, lemons. Like lemon and vinegars are really great to just boost those flavors for you. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're someone that's using broth, use um, use a low sodium version or a sodium free version. Mm-hmm. And these I guess like what, what I'm what I'm saying here is like you have so much control over the foods that you that you eat that like when you're when you're cooking it try experiments and trust me you, you're not you're not you're not going to miss it I promise. Awesome, I love it. I love it. Now we definitely have to be patient with ourselves and know that everything isn't going to always change overnight. We're not going to make everything perfect, perfectly healthy the next day and be able to maintain it completely. But habits are formed, but habits can be broken, but we have to be patient and take the time to actually allow those things to happen. I do have to say, yes, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So just, you know, I want to make sure that people realize some of these tips you can always find. ARP is a wealth of knowledge. So we have a a ton of tips that you can gather from uh, www.aarp.org. And what it will do is it will either lead you to other resources from um, expert expert uh, organizations. Um, and then there's a few tips and articles there that you can also uh, gather, gather as well. So check it out. See if you can find some information that will be helpful for you in your food journey. So back to I, you. I am olive using oil olive oil. So instead of putting in regular olive oil, I'm putting in just um, the spray to kind of help like, you know, get going a little bit. And also I have enough fat in here from the... Um, from the bacon. So I'm not I'm gonna add a just add a clove of garlic. Okay. And I have some salad and I always put in a little bit of apple cider vinegar and a little bit of honey in my collard greens. Oh um, I've never done the honey, but definitely the apple yeah. cider vinegar. Okay. Because it's like the collard greens are already a little bit bitter already. Yes. So the honey just so the honey just kind of balances everything out. And you know that the apple cider vinegar it just really just takes things to the whole to the next level. Yes. That's another um, staple to have in your home as well as some fresh, um, some fresh garlic. Everybody yes. uh, doesn't always use it or maybe they get the one that's pre-done. That's fine too, but just yeah. having a clove of fresh garlic, adding it to some oil really quick, really allows the, the flavors to, to spread throughout your foods. Absolutely. absolutely. I love like, cooking, I have to tell you. So. <laughs> girl, I can could, girl, I could tell, I can tell you, you, Joy, you must be chefing it up. For real. Yeah, no, just a little bit, just a little bit. It's it's my uh my way of of relaxing after a, a long day of work. <laughs> yeah, same here. I mean, we work we work so hard, and I just feel like it's this it's this time where I don't know. I feel most connected to food. Like this is this is like therapy for me. Um, I have a salad that I'm using. It's just basically okay. a mild onion. Um, I know some people put in like whole onions. I, I don't like the, the strong onion flavor mm-hmm. in, in my green, so I just use a shallot in this place. Okay. And Joy, how do you like your green? So I do like to throw in that smoked turkey leg and really get yeah. my, my broth going for a bit with the smoked turkey legs. I usually do that yep. for, you know, like you said, if it's a day where we have some time. Um, right really allowing that to boil for a bit and, and, you know, get the flavor throughout the broth. And then, you know, a little apple cider vinegar, throw in the greens, a few different seasonings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm, I like, I love adding Cajun spice. That's like my staple ingredient that I like to add to my greens. Um, as well as like, it like, I don't know, sometimes like if I'm really feeling feisty, I like to add a little bit of like, you know, cayenne pepper, a little mm-hmm. bit of hot sauce to it in the end, um, just to give it like the extra little kick. Yes, a little hot a bit. sauce is always a little, a little kick. <laughs> now I'm gonna use the same um, mm-hmm. spice mix that I put in here. I'm um, gonna put on a fish right on here, and you can add as much as you need to. So I'm probably gonna add a little bit more Cajun spice. And this is where 
this is where the ancestors are probably going to tell me to stop. There's enough salt. He's going to keep stirring it. And that bacon, like, oh my God. <laughs> Do I, I know you're not in here, but I, I know it's great. I can smell like the the garlics, the shallots, those greens, and like mm. the bacon. Like that bacon is just really adds something. Um, so let's yeah. talk a little bit about bacon. So we we did mention that you know people think oh no bacon's bad, but then you know people love bacon these days. But yeah. to be honest, I've always learned it's about moderation. If you can have some bacon, don't don't yeah. say that you, you're just going to eliminate this because it's going to be too high in sodium. It's all about the moderation piece. But if you can add some pieces to that, what do you think about bacon? Um, I think bacon. I think bacon is a staple in the, in the diet. Uh, mm -hmm. From for me, for me. Um, <laughs> but I will say this. I, I think. Um, I think if you like bacon, have it in moderation. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to, we're trying to incorporate the things that you love. So my thoughts on bacon are just that. If you love it, keep it. If you, if you, want, if you want to change it, you have options like turkey bacon. I'm pretty sure there's some vegan version out there by now. Um, you, have, you have options, but I, I think it's fine. Yes. I definitely oh, have done the, um, the, the bacon with my greens before, um, or even with my sauteed uh, cabbage. That's been something that I'll, I'll oh. add in a little bit of bacon flavor to as well. And then making sure I have, you know, the different types of seasonings. That's usually when I'm making my curry chicken. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> Can I just tell you something? This smells so good. Oh, my goodness. I'm jealous right now. I mean, it smells so, so good. Like, I think I have, I have, I bought about two big bunches of collard greens. So I mm -hmm. think on Sunday, I'm going to make some Instant Pot collard greens mm -hmm. uh, and, probably, and probably like some, some roasted chicken uh, or, help, or maybe some, or maybe some fried fish again. Um, okay. Another, another thing I love to do, um, and we're just we're, we're on the topic of like our, our, our soul, soul food foods mm -hmm. is, um, if you love if you love catfish or any other types of fish, but you don't want to fry it, even put it in the oven fire, you can still use those same seasonings and just can sear them. So mm -hmm. you can still use the same method, have the canola oil spray, you can make like some some pan seared black and black and catfish. Um, and that's a healthy way of still getting 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 in your protein. Um right. and just another way of, of enjoying it. I had a question and of course I lost it because that's how my brain works these days, but <laughs> I, I will get there in a moment. Oh yes, that was my other thing. You know, sometimes people fear buying these uh, fresh fruits and vegetables uh, mm -hmm. to add to their meals because they think it's going to go bad or they don't know what to do with it. Right. Um, I found myself recently and even uh, with regular meals is when I get those, mm -hmm. those vegetables that I'm not going to use right away, yeah. or I think they're about to go bad. I like to just throw them all together and saute, uh, saute them all together and add yeah. in, you know, that garlic powder or onion powder to really provide that extra seasoning. But I right. just wanted to, to mention about, you know, fresh versus the frozen or fresh versus the canned. And, you know, what are the, the better options for folks to take part in? Did you want to share anything about that? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really great question. And that's something that um, comes up a lot in um, diabetes care. It was people mm -hmm. who are trying to make healthier, make healthier decisions. Um, so frozen is just as good as fresh or sometimes even better. And it really depends on the season. So right now we're in the summer season and, you know, if you're, you're in Maryland, you already know that you have farmer's markets and you can pretty much buy a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say if you're, there's something that's out of season, if you find it frozen or even canned, it's, remember, it's processed at peak ripeness. So, mm -hmm. so, when, so when you buy frozen vegetables, they're at a, they're, they are as ripe as they can be at that moment. And the reason why, why frozen, why frozen is just as good as fresh, or sometimes even better, is because they're frozen. They tend to be less expensive, mm -hmm. and they and they last longer yes. in the uh, in, in the in the freezer. So if you're buying like fresh collard greens that you know that you're not going to use within a few days, don't buy them. Buy, buy the buy the frozen version, and that that's that works better for you. Um, if you are someone who's buying 
um, frozen frozen fruit. Buy that, buy that as well and throw it into a smoothie because they're packed with the same amount of nutrients as if you were to buy them fresh. Yes. So, I mean, it also like buying seasonal, if you are going to buy fresh, buy them seasonal. So right now, um, like strawberries are in season, blueberries um, are in season, and this is the best time to buy those things. But like in the in the, in the winter time or when out of season, you can buy them frozen as well. Save yourself okay. some money. Absolutely, I agree with you on that. And you know, like you said, it's catching the nutrients in them. And sometimes, oh my goodness, it looks like it tastes super good. <laughs> I I don't know what my honey is, but I don't need it. I forgot to put cayenne pepper yes. in my in my um. And my spice mix, so it is very. So this also has like a nice kick to it. Ooh! But like, girl, that's tomorrow for me. That apple cider vinegar. vinegar. Look, that apple cider vinegar did work. Yes, it did work in such a short amount of time. Mm. Wonderful. Sorry, just one more bite. <laughs> Look, the chef has to be able to eat their own cooking, right? <laughs> If I wasn't eating it, then there's a problem. Have. Yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> mm. That is delicious. Wow. That really is. Well, that is definitely on my menu for this weekend. I think that would be awesome to add to uh, my repertoire. <laughs> and, and, you, and you saw how fast that came together. Yes, it was nice and quick. I love it. And that's what people so, need. Sometimes we need those quick meals because if it's going to take longer, then, but then also having quick, healthy meals. People tend to go to meals. the quick, bad meals. Let's go right. to the quick, healthy meals. Quick, healthy meals. And like fish, the reason why I, I love things like fish or shrimp is because they're so, they, they cook so fast. Mm -hmm. Which is why, like, I think, like, when we talk about, like, when we talk about soul food, there are, there's so many shortcuts that you can make. And it's, I, I think the thing about, about soul food that, for me, I think people get wrong is that they separate it from other types of cuisines in terms of like, you have to slay, you have to, no pun intended, you have to be over your, mm -hmm. over your oven or stove all day just to make a really good meal when you don't need to do that. Especially today when, when people, when people just want convenience. So, yes. um, and you can do that and still find a way to make it flavorful. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I'm gonna check on the fish really quickly. Okay. See how that's see how that's going. Wonderful. wonderful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. It is. I'm gonna give it like a, maybe two or three more minutes. Add it on, but it is. It is bubbling. Wonderful. It you is know, bubbling. This, this has been amazing. I I am so excited to to the fact that you were able to show us collard greens and show us how to, to make uh, oven fried catfish. Um, should I say oven fried? Yes, oven fried yeah, oven catfish. Fried. Yep. Um, yep. In such a short amount of time, like you said, you know, this gives us the opportunity to, to you know, make something that's healthier in a shorter period of time. I mean, we've talked yeah. about a lot of great information we as have. well. It's, we've covered some great ground. Yeah. Um, but like I said before, there are a lot of resources out there for folks to check out. And, and if you want to celebrate, make yourself a good meal, make a good meal with your, your family or friends. But what, what is some, some advice that you would like to leave people on if you had some advice before the fish is done? Um, I would say support your family members who are trying to be healthy. And if you're that person who is trying to make healthier changes, lean on the people who want, who love you and want to help you. You don't have to go through any part of your health journey alone. Um, even if it is, you know, revamping one of your favorite soul food recipes, you just want to make a healthier version. Um, ask, people, ask people to come over and, and try and try some unique tips and share them as well. Share the knowledge, share the recipes. Um, I think for me, um, I've been such a patient advocate for people who have chronic illnesses, especially ones that, that disproportionately affect um, Black and African-Americans. Um, 
that I, I want more of us to just to share the knowledge that we have when it, when it comes to health and wellness. Um, Absolutely. And, and, and also just, you know, when we're thinking that like food is, food is meant to be enjoyed. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you are someone who is watching this and you're like, okay, I want to try that, make sure that you're having fun in the process because if you're not enjoying it, you're not going to stick with it. And this is your life. And you deserve all the kind of joy and stuff that food has to offer, especially food that that the people our ancestors have, have passed on down to us. I love it. I think that's an absolutely amazing message. And like you said, you know, our our uh, ancestors and our grandparents and and folks that have um, that are around, still around, you know, pass down those recipes. But you know, start to think of good options that will yeah. uh, benefit the generations to come. The you know, yeah. the grandkids and the children and things of that sort. But I think Absolutely. you definitely gave us a positive message um, as far as what it means to eat healthy. And this is definitely yeah. a part, I think a piece of, of uh, celebration that we can add to Juneteenth. We learned a yeah. lot. We've gotten that education here from this session uh, about our health and about our, our history. Um, and we're talking about self-improvement, taking the time, being kind to yourself and learning how yeah. to just do things um, in a way that can benefit you in the long run. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Self-improvement, health and wellness, food is joy. I love it. I love it. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, thank you everybody uh, for joining us here today. Um, AARP is always looking for a way to make a difference in, in our people's lives. And of course, we want to hear from you. So check us out, www.aarp.org slash MD. If you want to learn more about AARP Maryland or how to become a volunteer and do some work like this with us, you can have this same type of conversation uh, with yep. TR or others in the future. So uh, we hope that you learned something today. We hope that you enjoyed uh, this delicious meal that was created. I know our fish is still in the oven, but we yep. had the collard greens that we already saw the pre-prepared uh, catfish that came out the oven that looks oh so good and oh so crispy. So everybody, you have a wonderful day and happy Juneteenth. <laughs> happy Juneteenth. Thanks, Joey, for having me. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Hot fish, but it looks wonderful. Yeah, so you can see it is, that is crispy to the touch. Wow. Like, oh my God. Oh, that's hot. I'm sure that's hot. You want to put that down? <laughs> put this down. Um, let me serve this on a plate. Okay, wonderful. That looks delicious. I mean, this meal already looks amazing. We got the greens on one side. And you know what? One of the other things that I heard about um, our meals is making sure we add color to our, our, our meals. So, you know. Absolutely. Eat the yeah. rainbow. Eat yes. the rainbow. Eat the rainbow. I am all about making sure we make sure we eat the rainbow. Yes, because that's so I think we uh, I don't think we touched on this yet, but, you know, diets you know, they're only for a, a specific amount of time. Mm -hmm. So what you want to make sure is that you're getting all the nutrients possible throughout your day. So mm -hmm. obviously like I have, I have greens here. Um, and, uh, but maybe for another meal, I may have something with tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Um, later on, I may have like an orange for, uh, for a snack. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that, that you're getting it as many different types of foods as possible. Cause that's how you get in all of those nutrients, um, yes. that your body really needs. Um, and you know, I think someone has, I'm pretty sure someone's probably going to ask this question. They probably want to ask about carbs and if you have to give up carbs to, to eat healthier. And the answer is no. Right. Um, your your body your body need needs carbohydrate. Your brain needs carbohydrate. If, especially if you're someone that's starting out to work out, your body needs that extra energy. But it's the type of carb that you choose. Um, whether if it's like oatmeal or like a complex carb, um, sweet potatoes are are an excellent source of carbs. So if you yes. love if you love yams. Like we mentioned earlier that having that coconut palm sugar, you can make mm -hmm. changes because sweet potatoes are a really good source of, of vitamins and nutrients. Um, there you go. That's another another piece, the different, oh, that looks delicious. Oh my goodness. Uh, I wish I was over there. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a try a piece. Try a piece. I, I just know that it was like crispy when it broke. 
Yeah. Wow. So, oh, I bet it's still steaming. Ooh. Still steaming. All right, let's see how it, how it tastes. All right. Delicious. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so good. Now, um, Julie, do I have time to make a, a quick tartar sauce? Sure, of course. Okay. So I think what I love with this and this um I'm just taking one more bite. <laughs> um, I love to make like a quick tartar sauce because that's what they do at the restaurant I go to. Um, so when I make a quick tartar sauce, I'm sorry, that was really good. I mean, that's sorry, that fish. This is why I said you have to season the fish right. before you put on the coating. Cause that because otherwise it'll be bland, but it is so much flavor. It's flavor. It's also a little spicy. Because mm -hmm. I had cayenne pepper in it. Right. But that cornmeal, that cornmeal does work. It that that fish is crispy. And you can tell it's not greasy. Mm -hmm. But it's wow. very moist. It's very delicious. It's girl. Delicious. <laughs> I, look, I feel, I, I feel, I feel like I ain't got nothing else to say. But um, but when I make a quick um quick tartar sauce, again, it's very very quick. It's just for me like light mayonnaise, mm -hmm. um, and some uh relish. Okay. And I believe I have um. If I don't, please forgive me, but. I um, also do a little bit of capers as well. Okay. Ooh, and some um, some salt, some pepper, um, a little bit of a little bit of garlic. In fact, I have I still have a little bit of garlic here that I didn't use. So I'm gonna just mince that up a little bit. Okay. Really, really, really thin slice. And put put that in there. And you can use whatever, you know, whatever you like here for your favorite tartar sauces. You don't have to use the capers. Um, I think also when it comes to making tartar sauce, you actually don't need a ton of salt because the mayonnaise is, is, is a little salty. Okay. The capers are, are a little salty and the relish is, is a little salty. So you, you have a ton of flavors right there. You have some capers. Everyone is like getting the view into... Um, how, how I like to cook on the, uh, <laughs> during the week. So I have some capers I'm gonna, I'm gonna add in. And if you, if you don't want, like I said, if you don't want the extra sodium, you don't need the capers. Okay. And then I'm gonna crack some fresh pepper. Yes, I love fresh cracked pepper. And then it's for like a little kick. Um, I really like hot sauce. Okay. I like I like a little bit of hot sauce in my tartar sauce. Definitely not something people have to add. Um, you can also buy a tartar sauce as well. Put a little <laughs> couple of dashes there. And with your tartar sauce, or when you make your own, you know what's going in it too. Exactly, and that's the fun thing about cooking. And I hope that's what people get from this. Is just they're really. There aren't a ton of hard, fast rules to cooking. Um, it really is about what you like. Um, but if you are cooking for family, like, you know, listen, listen, listen to your family. I think part yes. of the reason why I've, why I've learned is because I've had family members that have been um, very honest about, like, my really, really good moments. My, my also, uh, so I'm just going to taste this really quickly. Okay. That is... That's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it to the side. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. I'm add like a little bit right here. Mm -hmm. I just want like a, a tiny bit here just so I can um like kind of scoop it up into the fish. Okay. And then I'm gonna put on a tiny bit of hot sauce. All right. On my on directly on the fish. Looks and to me, this is a protein and a carb because mm -hmm. of the cornmeal and the, the flour mm -hmm. and vegetables. And right. it is not boring. 
It is not boring. It is flavorful. That fish is still steaming. Mm -hmm. So you can see that coating right there, yeah. nice and crispy. And I know you mentioned that it has the carb uh, within the cornmeal and the flour, but you won't miss the major carb or starch that you would have on the side of the plate because you've exactly. made something that's one is bountiful. And I love the fact that it has um, your protein, but it has um, your vegetable on the side in those mm -hmm. portions. So mm -hmm. perfect. Portion size. Yes. So as you see, I'm eating on a smaller plate. Yes. Instead uh, of the larger one. And this is, mm -hmm. helps me control my portion, my portion sizes and, um, and like how much I eat. Makes sense. It makes sense. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. That looks great. Thank you.